So I need to make a tapered mug. I need to make a, um, a tri-foot mug. I need to do a quick demo on the wheel to show you who are going on the wheel what is expected after this next three days. After today, when you come back on Thursday, you're going to be starting your project. Half of you are going to be starting making mugs. Half of you are going to be starting on the wheel um, doing your final cylinder. Do you have any questions? I need to cover. If you missed last class, um, Google Classroom has the, the demo and you need to go and watch that. That's where we learned um, the requirements. That's where we learned uh, about making cylinder mugs and all of that great stuff. Okay. On this one, Okay, for this mug, we're using this template. Okay, so it's made out of tar paper and it folds around. We didn't do one of these, right? Okay, it folds around and it creates a flat bottom and a flat top. But you see how it curves. Okay, this is what, um, if you go to Maverick and get uh, a hot chocolate or a coffee, that's the kind of mug. Um, solo cups are like this, they're tapered, and this is the kind of pattern they come from. You can't just cut any curve in any dimensions and get a flat bottom and a flat top. Okay, so for this, um, is there a wire tool on that table? I need to throw out enough clay for this plus the bottom. So we can put our phone away. So again, if you haven't, if you don't remember how to cut clay, make sure to put your thumb on the back and pull to it. It is not two hands pulling, it's just one. And then I'm gonna take this flatten it out just a little bit. Okay, and on this, this is this mug. Okay, and we can do it this way or we can flip it over. I'll actually show you that that way as well. I wanna pass that around again and look at it. I'm gonna throw this out. Now, do you remember when I said, you gotta make sure that your rim is thin. Yes, okay. On this one, I'm gonna leave it just a little bit thicker. And it's not for the rim, we can clean that up later. It's because this is a free form piece, we need to have a little extra clay. If you make a really thin slab and then try to do this, um, this tapered mug, you're gonna run into a lot of slumping. So you get that going. Now, how you do this is up to you. Um, for me, I'm gonna put my texture on. Now, if you want a texture that is pretty straight, when you're done, you've got to follow that curve, okay? If you just run a straight line, it's going to bend up. So we follow that curve. You don't care, I don't care. Um, you can put different textures on here. You choose. The nice thing about this one is we know exactly where center is going to be. 
because we're going to cut it exactly on this piece of, of tar paper. So if you want a design that is very symmetrical, you can pretty much get that. Where with the other one, remember when it overlapped, we just kind of picked a spot to, to cut the angle. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. So this is how the tapered mug goes. I did my texture. I threw on my slab. I did my texture. And now I'm going to cut it. The top and the bottom are straight up and down. And I'm just going to use this tar paper as my guide. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. And then my angles, I'm going to cut in and out. Doesn't matter which way, but one is in and one is out. And again, I'm going to use my tar paper as my guide. Cut that in. And then come here and cut that out. Take my clay, I'm gonna wedge that up. The other one will be good for the bottom. So before I move on with this, I'm gonna throw out another slab and create a cylinder for my tripod mug. And I'll explain that as I, why as I go. One, if I let this sit out for about 10 minutes, um, 15 minutes, it'll stiffen up a little bit and it'll hold itself better. Which is why I'm gonna do it with my tripod mug. Because I want it to hold itself better. So we're going to cut this. Now, so as we go to requirements or steps for the tripod mug, you can choose any diameter and any height for this mug. You can freeform it or you can use a cylinder to wrap it around. Um, I'm going to freeform it. But uh, if you remember the cylinder mug, you can do that and then put the tripod feet on it instead of a bottom. Okay. Just going to use this here. Grab a measuring stick. And I'm going to use just the piece of paper exactly as it is. I'm not going to change the dimensions. It'll be, it'll be fine. Except for here, I'm going to cut in. A flat bottom. Top. And I'm going to cut out over here. Now, how you do it is up to you. You can line this up a little bit off of the paper or right on the paper because my measurements don't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So, if you wanted exactly this paper, um, you can come in here. And just cut this at an angle, like so. And you can always figure out about how big that is by wrapping it up, right? Okay, set that aside. Oh, and guess what I didn't do? Textures, right? So, I'm not going to try to put textures on. Um, this will be one that uh, I'll carve into. So, I'll carve a design into it. Okay, these two go back into the bag.
And I'm going to set this aside. I mean, really, I could come in here and do a light texture if I wanted to. We'll just do that. That would be good. Okay. I need to score and slip. So we're back to the tapered mug. And we're going to score and slip this. I like to bring my edge to the edge of my table so I can just run my serrated rib like so. Carefully flip that over. Okay, and then we're gonna add some slip. So I'd love to be nice about this, but I've already asked for phones to be put away. It's crazy that um, this is when we learn and then we don't know what we're doing. So I'm gonna lift this up, pull it around, and I'm gonna zipper this. So the bottom is gonna come up, we're gonna get that pushed together. like that, okay. I'm really gonna kind of compress that. I'm not gonna put a lot of water on it. I'm just gonna use my finger to compress it. If you do it towards you, you can see better. You see how that texture pretty much flattened out? Okay, kind of a, a cool little concept. Um, design work, graphic design onto um, things that are shaped weird is an interesting thing uh, because you have to mess with when they come together. Um, I'm gonna... We'll blame that on the uh, construction guys outside. <laughs> okay. What was I doing? Oh. I'm gonna take my wood knife and run it up my seam, compress that really well. And wood knife, fingers on the outside, get that cleaned up. And then later, we can come in and smooth it out when it's leather hard. We can put our handle there, we can add some texture. There's lots of things we can do. Okay, do you see how skawampus that is? Or non-circular? So we're gonna take these cool little flower pots, okay? And they work well for this size. If you have a bigger one, this pot is not gonna work very well. It won't fit. But we put it in here, and we push down and twist. And that trues it out or turns it into a circle. Now we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing over here. Now I don't wanna push down as hard because it'll push that out. But that turns that into a circle, okay? And this can be done on any of our mugs. If you make a mug and it's a little bit off, this should be able to fit in there. Okay, so we have to decide. Oh, I didn't put a handle on this. Um, do we want it to go with the big side up or the big side down? And either is fine. Like this, like this. Okay, either is fine. Um, you'll see mugs both ways. So if I'm gonna do it that way, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm going to score the bottom. Add some slip. It's super important that as you're working with these tapered mugs, that you're extra gentle as you move them. Okay, if you're really being kind of rough with them, they're going to fall apart. You're gonna squish. Set that in there, work that down. Go to score that.
then what do I do after this? And you do like an angle cut? Yeah, I'm gonna cut this at an angle. Anyone wanna give me at least one reason why we cut it in an angle? Kinda just like gets it to come together and stick better. Okay, so it seals up the seam. What's another reason? Okay, it makes it not bulky, but it's a glaze, a glaze stop. The glaze will run to that spot and then it has to sit and pool or think. And if it's not too much glaze, it'll sit there. If it is too much glaze, it'll still run over. And then the third reason why I do them. It makes it sandwich. It makes it what? It was like... For show? <laughs> The, the shadow. So it lifts it up. It gives it a little shadow or a lift, and it makes the whole piece just feel or look lighter. Okay. Now, if you're getting to this point, the most important thing is that it's sealed up. If there's something about it you're like, I'm not so certain I like that right now, maybe it's a little chunky. If you can get it off, great. If you need to, wait till it's leather hard, and then you can come in and take care of that. Um, and smooth that out. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Now is not the time to make a handle for that and put it on. If you do, you're gonna squish it. But this one has been sitting here since Friday and it's a nice, good leather hard and I can make a handle for it. So let's do that real quick. Did anyone come up with any, what kind of could I do a certain type of handle? Did you think, oh, what, what, what can I do with the handle? It's awfully annoying today. No one's thought about your handles? That's okay. I'm going to push this into a thicker coil and roll it out. What's the thickness we're going for? Who said what? Did someone say something? Just a marker. Wasn't it? Yeah, one of the dry erase markers. Wherever I put my... Okay, so as you're rolling this out, nope, way too big. That's a good benchmark for your, your handle. Okay, that's gonna make a bunch of handles. And how many handles did I say you should make? What about you making two? So like two per mug? Yeah, at least two per each mug. Maybe three. Um, do you remember the reason why? Yeah, both of you said in case it doesn't look good, in case you mess up. Okay. And I see this over and over. It's, it's literally, well, I make one handle, it's a little flumpy, whatever. I'll just, I'll get that to stick. And that's the handle. Okay. But if I make multiple handles, and I mess up on one, you're gonna be able to adapt easier without feeling like, oh, I'm just wasting time. And you're not wasting time, even if you have to. So, I'm gonna taper this down. So here's a story. Um, there's this guy, his name's Joe Benyon. <laughs> Joe Benyon is a potter in Spring City. Have we talked about Spring City yet? Maybe, yeah? Okay, anyone know where Spring City is? It's in Utah. Okay, it's past Fairview on the way to Ephraim, on the left side or the east side. Anyways, Joe Benyon makes mugs like this. Okay, this is a Joe Benyon mug, okay. Um, and he would be considered a potter. I wouldn't consider him a ceramist or a ceramicist. He's a potter. He makes functional work only. Um, so for Joe, 
I took a workshop from him about six years ago, maybe. Um, I just added some texture to that. I'm gonna gently massage this around. That might be a good one. I could add that same texture. Oh, there is the same texture on there. So we can do that. Remember, this is the only time that you can, in my opinion, get away with adding water easily. So if you want to turn this into a triangle, you can. So anyways, Joe, we're doing this workshop and I had done handles before, but he was showing his handles and I said to him, hey, when am I gonna get good at handles? Okay, and they do handles, he does handles a little bit differently than I'm showing you. But he said this, pull a hundred handles. So what he's talking about is he has to attaches his piece here and it's shorter and he pulls it into the shape. He says, pull a hundred handles. I go, okay. And then he says, and then pull a hundred more. And I go, okay. And he says, and then you're going to realize that you suck at handles and you need to do a hundred more. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And it's not so much that you suck, it's just that as a potter, you're going to work and do these things. And by the time you do 200, 300, you're going to find your rhythm and you're going to find the way you do things. And so this is a Joe Benyon handle. Okay? A lot of experienced potters would know that. They could look at this mug and go, that's a Joe Benyon pot. Okay? Um, because he's pulled so many handles and they look like his handles. So it's just one of those things. I'm not asking you to do that many, just two or three, right? Okay, take that. I'm just gonna put that like so. Okay, set those aside. Let's attach one. If you don't remember how to put these on, you're gonna hold it up like this and kind of push it back and forth until you figure out where you think it's gonna look good. That is not where we want it. That handle's too big, okay? But we're gonna cut off a little bit. That's probably about right. So I'm gonna come in here, cut this, cut this and slip it. Put my slip on the other side. And as we're going, please ask questions. I can redo something. Place that. I like to place it on my seam. Okay, I'm going to pull that off, score that. Now, if you're throwing this onto a leather hard or harder, uh, as long as it's not bone dry, it'll be okay. But you have to score really well. Like pretty deep, pretty aggressively, and then I would come back in and slip it again. Because on soft clay, when we did our cylinders, it's soft clay to soft clay and it goes together, same amount of water, everything kind of matches. But on this, there's less water, so you've got to be like, hey, I'm gonna score you, I'm going to add slip to you, and I need you to kind of equalize. Can you even see a difference in color on my clays? Okay, so I need you to equalize. So I'm going to really press this around, get that sealed up, Use my knife here, really press that in. Spend a few extra minutes and it'll save you in the long run. Okay, the handle's not bad. I still like mine to be up a little bit, so I usually push it up just a little bit so it's a little bit flatter. Now I'll come back in and clean that underside. If there's areas that you don't like, maybe it's a little chunky, wait till it's leather hard. You can come in here with a sponge and clean that up. Okay, 
this with your rim. My rim, where's my, is a little bit thicker. And so, something you can do um, with any number of tools, you can come in here, you see how it's nice and squared off? I'm gonna come in here and just shave down the inside just a little bit. Trying to be pretty smooth and even about it. And basically I'm gonna take about half that thickness off. Okay, and then I'm gonna go the outside as well. The fettling knife is probably your best tool for this. But I didn't have one, so this will be fine. And this reduces where your mouth wraps around it. And as it, um, you'll be able to, you'll enjoy your drinking experience better. Don't believe me, you make a really thick rimmed mug. Okay, so I've tapered that in just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my sponge and smooth it out. I don't know, I didn't do that on here. But that'll be a, that'll be a better experience. Okay. The mug and the handle are two different consistencies of clay. So you've got to wrap this up um, and leave it wrapped up for a while. So we'll grab our bag. Be extra careful with it. Wrap that up really well, okay? And then those should equalize as we move forward. Um, let's see if there's something you need to see. Here's, here's a cylinder mug we did with two handles. Um, somebody asked me if you could make like a soup mug, and that's, you can. This one I'd probably make a little shorter if I was going to make it an actual soup mug. Okay, what time do we get out of here again? 11.15, perfect. Let's do the tripod mug. So this has been sitting for a few minutes. It's also a little bit thicker, which means it'll hold itself. Let's score that. Let's score this. Add some slip. So we're making, oh, oh, that one. one of these two mugs, okay? Now height-wise, yeah, it's even, it's gonna be about this tall when we're done with this. You could make it shorter, okay, completely up to you. Um, but think, because you're pushing this in, however much you measure should be a little bit further. So if you want a five inch mug, um, you're gonna have to go probably about six inches to get this to go. So I'm gonna lift this up. You can, you can wrap this around a cylinder. Get this zippered together. Clay's a little bit thicker. The clay's been sitting out for 10 minutes. Way important that as we do this, we're pressing in Compressing that clay, flip it over, get here. Now, let me tell you what a typical three days looks like for beginners. Um, and there's a couple of ways this works. Um, first day, you come in, you start a project, you get halfway through it and it completely fails, okay? That happens. It's not that big of a deal. 
And if we're paying attention, we're going to learn something from that failure, which means when you start over, it should go quicker or you won't make the same mistake. I'm going to come in here and compress this. Um, another is you come in and it just makes sense and it works. And you're going to work and you have a mug done the first day. Okay, and then you have a second mug done the second day. Um, in the first scenario, you come in and you struggle and you finish up or you make it, you finish up one the second day and then you finish one up the third day. Um, for some of you, it may take you three and a half days. You might need to come in on your own time to do this. Um, we all have our own little timetable for doing stuff. Okay, I'm going to put in my little pot there, round that out. If you get your mug done, or mugs done in two days, um, some of the things that you'll need to pay attention to is, did you hit all the requirements? Are they really cleaned up? Um, the three main structural things that I'm gonna look for in this pot are, is the bottom smooth? Is the rim smooth, which means it's not chunky or sharp? And is the handle smooth? Okay, because if you grab a handle and it's sharp, that's a problem. If you drink from it and it's sharp or chunky, that's a problem. If the bottom is not smooth and you put that on a counter or a table and push it, you're gonna scratch it. Okay, so those are the three functional things that I'm looking for. Obviously, we're look, also looking for no cracking, no holes, things like that. <coughs> um, so when you get to the end, you look at those things and you go, okay, what do I need to do to make this good or better? And if you don't know, come find me, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it. Um, but be prepared. If you come and ask me a question and then don't implement it, that's, that's kind of, it's kind of sad. Um, so if you're like, what can I do to make this better? And I say, hey, do this, this, and this. And then you just disregard it and turn it in anyways. Um, just, just plan on your, your grade dropping a little bit. One, because it's not right. And two, um, you ask, you should implement. Um, if you don't care, then don't ask. But I want you to ask. Okay, now we're gonna come in here and make a tripod mug. So right here we have three. We're gonna make them fairly even. And as I push, you gotta be aware of your seam and your seam can go anywhere. It can be pushed in, it can stay out on the foot. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm gonna come in here and mark this. So I'm gonna line up here, here and there. Okay, I don't know if you can see the marks, but they're on the yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I've never tried. I'm sure if, if you can get it compressed in and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You look it up and see. Um, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start to push this in. Now, something to consider, my marks were just my beginning, so I'm just kind of looking at this. Something to consider, as I do this, the further, up, in this case down while we're doing it, I push, um, the taller, the, sorry, the flatter your tripod is gonna be. If you barely push this in, then this middle spot is gonna be a whole lot deeper than your feet. So as I push this in, if I come just here, there's gonna be a bigger space between the middle and here. But if I go way down here, it'll flatten it out a little bit. And that is up to you. My seam's opening up just a little bit. So I get it about there. OK, 
okay? And then I'm going to score it. You can use your serrated rib. You can use a needle tool. And I'm gonna add some slip to the whole thing. And I'm gonna push this together. Make it as equal as possible. Um, the nice thing about a tripod versus say four is if one is off a little bit, it'll tip, but it'll still pretty much hold itself. So I'm gonna get this really pushed in, get those seams together. And then there's two ways to finish this off. You can roll little tiny coils and put them in there and smooth them out. And that's a, a perfectly good way. Or I'm gonna wedge up this clay. Hopefully this works. Anyone tried wedging a tiny bit of clay? It's a pain in the butt. Hopefully that crack it doesn't cause too many problems. We'll just grab another chunk. A little bit softer. Okay, while I'm doing this, are there any questions on any of the three things? And then the, you three that are back on the wheel, I'm gonna come right back there and do a demo real quick. You can hang out where you're at, but. So I'm just gonna make this fairly thin. I'm gonna put this down. Give that a cut. And then put it back on there. And I'm really just going to compress that in. Because um, it's wet on wet. I shouldn't have to do too much. If you do this when it's leather hard, make sure you really slip and score both sides. Get that on and then you can later Clean it up. Okay, can you see how that's kind of sealed up? Sometimes when you do it, there's a hole in the middle, and this will help seal that hole up. Now, on the inside, there's some gaps. The gaps aren't that big of a deal, um, but if you are drinking more than say water out of this you're going to want to clean them up so this is how you do it and now is not the time to do it so you're going to wait a little bit but i'm going to show you how to do it anyway so you're going to make a little coil and you're going to drop that into the bottom you're going to take your wood knife and you're going to push that into that area and then just gently clean it up. Later, you can come in and smooth it out. Um, usually later doesn't happen, but... And then when you put a glaze on it, it's not so much that there's bumps there, it's that there's big canyons there. Doing it, put that in the bottom. Okay, any questions on those three things? the three um, types of mugs. True that out. Do not put a handle on it right now. Okay, that'll sit around. Do bag it up, and then you can put a handle on it later. Okay, we have 12 minutes until the bell rings. So let's head to the back. Let's do this quick wheel throwing demo. 
Cool. And then we'll be done on the demos. Thursday, we'll start our projects. Ready, head back.